Good evening, good evening. Hello, hello. A uh, small, a brief little interlude there uh, after the little sting um, when it went black. But I'm here, yes, it's all good ish. <laughs> um, good evening, chat. Uh, yes, Sav says refresh if you have no vid. Um, and hopefully, oh, yeah, you have told him. Sav's told Matt that we are streaming. Um, yes, who's in there then? Neil and Tom and Graham and Blaze and Ian and Bernice and me. Um, Russell, hello Russell. Gordy, Kellyanne, Angela, Spiritus, Cybernoid, Leanna, Ridian, Trevor G, Chief, Miles, Mike B. Where's Kizzy? I need Kizzy to be in chat, in chat tonight. Someone wake Kizzy up and say, come into chat immediately. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've got 30 seconds apparently, yeah. Anyway, I've got stuff tonight. It, it may or may not happen. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in one of them. Uh, I'm in one of them nights today. One of them moods today. Should be good. Yeah. I've got 15 seconds apparently. You can't hear her. She's over here in the laptop, so you can't hear her. <laughs> oh dear. Yes. Apparently, I've got 10 seconds until I'm live. So um, we're gonna have um, gonna have some of this. I think. Yes. Well, there you go. Yes, <laughs> I, I am live apparently. Yes, I'm going to just move that into shot. There you go, and move my screwdriver out of shot because I don't need that. Um, I was <laughs> I was using it um, momentarily to get something out because it was stuck. Um, yes, now it wasn't a new bug, uh, Neil. I've completely redone the software today. Um, for I installed Windows 10 on my studio partition because um, I have two partitions on my computer. One is the normal one. The other one is the studio one, which I just use for this. Um, and I upgraded it to Windows 10 last week, and it's it's not all that cracking, to be fair. So I'm on the other one, um, but I had to do all my shots again. Yes, uh, which is why I've got a strange line behind me, which I will sort out when I do the titles, because I know what that is. Um, so there you go. Yes, Windows 10 seems to be um, reasonable. I've got it on my laptop down here. Um, but it doesn't like the software that we use. Um, I had all sorts of issues yesterday, so I thought I'm not even going to go there tonight. I want to make sure things work. So, uh, yes. So, uh, tonight uh, I've got some new stories. Uh, I've got a bit of VT um, that I did for Kizzy. And Kizzy's not even in chat. Let me go to my little other mouse. No, it's definitely not there. Anyway. Kizzy asked me a question last week, and it was uh, it was that. Can you do a favour and look at the Aspire Triton sometime? Well, I did. I've got one. I bought it last week, and I've done a bit of VT for you, um, so you can look at that, and then Kizzy can look at it on the <laughs> on the on the YouTube. Um, yes. So I'll look at that in. Um, let's see what have I got that for. I've got that in part two. Yes. Um, I've got some news and uh, some bits. I did a little poll on our Facebook group. Uh, if you don't know about our Facebook group, we've got a Facebook group, yes. Um, and the question was, uh, where are we? It was this. It's about dash cams. Um, have you got a dash cam? If not, why not? Um, so I've got a bit of VT that I did weeks and weeks ago, which I was going to show you, but I thought I'd tie that in quite nicely. Um, so we've got that. And all that is going to come up after the titles, which I've just been trying to find, and I can see them now. So it's all good. Um, have I had a shave, Marco, or just gone grey? I've I've trimmed my beard. Yes, it's a number one. It was like I don't know, bushy. Um, so I've trimmed it. <laughs> Actually, my hair trimmed as well. Um, but I've trimmed my beard, and it is grey. Yes. Um, so it kind of looks like I haven't got one here because it's grey. But then when I do have one, it looks grey. <laughs> you can't win, can you? Really, you either go bald or you go grey or you go both. Or if you're really lucky, you don't. Um, but, you know, such is life. Anyway, let's have what I like to call the titles, and then after that, I'll be back. Yes. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade. 
UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Yes, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this week's episode. This week's episode of Vapacy. Notice that line has gone now. Yes, I've moved my curtain. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and it's Tuesday, the 4th of August, 2015. Um, that means it is three days to Vape Fest. Yes, it's the weekend. OMG. Um, I'm super excited uh, to be going down there this, uh, this weekend. Um, for the whole weekend of fun, frivolity, mods, beer, cider, burgers, and um, music. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Um, and um, good evening, Kizzy. You're in chat now. I was just talking about you. Yeah. Um, because I answered your question. Let me do that one. There we go. Better shot. Um, I, I've answered this question for you, and you'll see that in part two. Um, Let's start with some news. What have I got for you first? Let's have a look at the Daily Mail, or the Daily Fail, as we like to call it. But actually, this one's quite good. Yes, the Daily Mail. Austrian court snuffs out planned e-cigarette restriction. Uh, and this is um, yesterday, as reported by Reuters. Um, Austria's e-cigarette retailers exhaled in relief <laughs> after a constitutional court overturned a planned amendment to tobacco laws that would have limited the sale of most products to officially licensed tobacco shops. The government have proposed the sales of e-cigarettes be limited to the Alpine Republic's licensed tobacconists from October to protect young people, here we go again, from public health reasons. Uh, especially sellers of e-cigarettes objected because they would have been allowed only to sell reusable devices but not the liquid to fill them up or disposable cigarettes. Uh, and the court ruled on Monday, however, that the that the proposed amendment was unconstitutional, saying that the health arguments put forward were not solid enough to justify blocking the retailer's right to trade freely and that e-cigarettes should not be treated in the same way as tobacco products. There's a bit more to that and the link has gone into chat. Thank you, Mr. Ridian Matt. Um, you can read the rest of it. It's only that, that little segment there. Um, that's interesting because that whole Article 20 one of the reasons, one of the arguments against that is it's unconstitutional uh, and limits the sales uh, for no good reason otherwise, other than it's tobacco related. Um, Spiritus Vape says he's been following this. Obviously, it's a great it's great for Austrian vape stores right now. But how does this affect the TPD? Surely Austria still has to implement in full since it's in the EU. Well, no, and this is the thing. The member states can alter bits, um, but they have to do it by May the 20th, 2016. Um, they don't have to accept everything. Now, if they're wise, this is what they'll do. They'll look at different bits and say, well, hold on a minute. This is a bit crazy. Let's not implement that. They don't have to implement it, um, which is why the Article 20 court case is going through, trying to get that. So it doesn't happen in this country. Um, but from what I understand, each member state has to implement the TPD, but they can change things around a little bit. Um, so yes, it's, it's complicated a lot at the same time. 
if only they'd used common sense then we wouldn't be in the position that we could possibly be in next year uh, which is why Vapefest is looking even more like it's going to be a good weekend um, because it could well be the last time we have something like that in this country um, but there's still a fight uh, and if you haven't been to and uh, signed the petition online on the article 20 action um, haven't got the link in my notes um, but one of the guys might have the link if they can shove that into chat for me um, so that was that one what else have we got we've got this one here yes this is from eddie.net um, blowing smoke is vaping waste as bad as cigarette butts and this is in kind of in relation to the landfill and the waste from cigarettes and e-cigarettes um, and it says that consumers are not properly aware of the dangers of e-cigarette waste with whole vaping devices being sent straight to landfill rather than being recycled that's according to waste management company business waste which claims that e-cigarettes are are pose and <laughs> e-cigarettes are pose e-cigarettes pose an increasing problem for waste management firms across the country i do wish these people would actually read their text before they put it up because when i'm reading it it's not grammatically correct anyway we'll go back um, users don't know how to recycle their vaping waste said hall that's mr mark hall so it's slipping through the net and ending up in general waste that's destined for landfill and that's something we keen to avoid now this does go on uh, for another four slides i won't show you those the link has gone into chat um tom prune from isita um, talks to the guys in that particular segment um it it is probably a good idea if you're getting rid of old batteries to take them to a, your local recycling center um, if you go to the the dump occasionally um, might be a good idea to take them with you and put them into the recycling areas i'm not sure if the supermarkets would allow you to put them in with the batteries that they recycle or not um, but they are covered under the we directive um, for products like that um, any kind of e-juice and stuff should be disposed of safely as well and not just down the sink because if it gets into the waterways it can poison fish so i think we need to look at how we should dispose of these items properly uh, and maybe the councils can start doing some sort of recycling um, that goes in with your household recycling i don't know what a chap think um leanna Aldous called my green mep about waste was interested interested in what way leanna tell us what tell us what you said um <laughs> day three on said god's teeth ban all batteries and plastic products save the planet yeah well there is that but you know at the end of the day they do contain um chemicals that probably don't need to be in landfill uh, if they can be successfully reclaimed and reused it's probably a better idea to do that isn't it um, I'm all for recycling all our stuff's recycled um, <laughs> the council are giving us all boxes to put everything in so you, you end up having a lot less in your general waste and more in your recycling which is a good thing I think um, green was interested Liana well in, in what way <laughs> what did he say or she I don't know uh, and it, she also said I put a disposable cigar like in a battery recycling box um, yeah I often wonder how long it takes cigarette ends to kind of decompose properly because I, I, I've heard it's something like 50 years but that's kind of an off the wall plucked from the air figure um, somebody go to Google and, and uh, see what the uh, what the half-life or the uh, decomposition life of a cigarette end is because it must be millions of them all over the place um, but yes, batteries I would, like 18650s, I'd put in a kind of shop battery recycling thing if they're completely gone. Um, certainly wouldn't recycle a mod. I, well, I would recycle it, I'd use it again, but um, I'd take the battery out and try and replace the battery first, I think. Yes. Uh, and Cybernoid says he's seen a few discarded CE4s around. Yeah, is that because they're rubbish? <laughs> or is that because... Uh, they're, uh, they just fall to pieces sometimes and you just take it off your mod and throw it away. Um, I don't know what I do see a lot of. Um, 
on my travels, especially on the way up to Scotland. I see a lot of bottles of strange coloured liquids by the side of the road. <laughs> Not a journey goes by uh, and unless I see at least a couple of those. Shocking. Anyway, what else have we got? Yes, that was uh, a little bit of news there. Uh, there's only a couple of stories I had this week. Now, if you've seen our new Facebook group, Bedfjords TV, you'll see a little trailer in the adverts about uh, our various social media contactable ways. Yes, I think I said that right. <laughs> um, I posed this question on Sunday. Um, I said, who was it asked coming in their car and why? And I did this slide earlier, so this probably has changed. But 16 people said that they didn't. Four people said that they did, including me. Uh, and one said, why do I need one? And I think they might have been in America. Not quite sure. Um, but yes, and I said I'd covered it. And I did a little of e bit of ET weeks ago. So here it is, it's about four minutes long. Um, and I just started to mention that you'll see a shot of my dashboard cam when the car is moving I did not film that when I was moving somebody else filmed it for me I'd just like to just point that little bit out yes here we go I have up here which uh, I will show you I'll take a little shot of it afterwards um, when I'm uh, when I'm back home I've got a dash cam and it's in my front windscreen, in front of my mirror. And that shows everything at the front of me. It shows the speed I'm going, it shows where I am, it shows where I've been. And literally this whole journey will be logged. Um, and everything about it, where I am, the speed, any collisions, any bumps, whatever comes up and all you do is take off take out the SD card shove it in your computer um, move the data across into a folder and then run the software and then it stitches it all together and it creates one long journey now if you have one of these in your car anything in front um, will come up if you have one in the rear screen as well then not only will you get the front view, you'll get the back view. And if you have an accident, you've got the registration number of the car, you've got the weather conditions, you've got how fast you were going, all that good stuff. Uh, and most insurance companies will now take dash cam evidence as evidence um, for claims. Top tip for me, really, being on the road so much, is get yourself a dash cam. Mine cost about 70 quid, including a 32 gig micro SD card. And that stays in there all the time and it just overwrites. Um, if I had one in the back, I'd get the cheaper model without the GPS because I've already got the GPS on the front. Um, so, you know, for about 120 quid, you can have a camera in the front and in the back. Uh, and that would serve as a, a nice little um, backup should you have an accident or you know so somebody hit you or if you see another accident you could then provide your get your dash cam footage to the driver who's had the accident um, or if you're in Russia and you see a, a meteor crashing to earth you've got a nice bit of footage uh, this isn't a dash cam this is a microphone for my uh, hands-free car kit let me just tell you before I get questions about uh, what that is um, so yeah I bought my dash cam by the way just before I finish on this subject I was in an accident six years ago where I was suckered by a couple of guys at a roundabout. Um, they pulled away, I was going down towards the roundabout and then all of a sudden they put the, the, the brakes on and I went into the back of them. Um, and my insurance company at the time paid out £7,500 for personal injury to the driver in front even though there was no injury, there was no damage to the cars, there was nothing but he claimed damage to his car and he claimed personal injury because um, I only hit him at about 22 miles an hour, if that. If I'd had a dash cam at the time, that would have captured that footage uh, and he wouldn't have got away with it. So it, there's all these people trying to relieve other people of money and this cash for crash craze uh, can only be stopped by uh, us collectively having cameras and um, 
stuffing it to them, if you like. Um, so there you go. The sun has come out, as you can probably see now, the sun has come out. It's, um, it's turning out to be a nice day. I've got about three hours to go, and then I can put my feet up, have a brew, and then um, start thinking about what I'm gonna do for this week's show. Um, this has been one of those things that I should be doing for this week's show. So uh, I'll see you back in the studio. Bye for now. Yes, there you go. Tell you it was short. Uh, and Neil said uh, you could get two hundred pound from you being framed. <laughs> yeah, he could if he saw something and he got on there. I guess. Um, but it's all good. Yes, um, I thought I was going to get some comments about what I said at the roundabout, but no, I didn't, so I'll just gloss over that one. Um, yeah, I was most most perturbed um, that um, these guys um, deliberately caused an accident, but because I was the one going into the back of them, it was my fault. So annoying. Anyway, I've got protection now. I carry protection at all times, and it's called a dash cam in my car. Uh, we're going to go to the adverts now. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to look at the Triton tank, especially for Kizzy. Yes. See you after the break. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and pure perfection e liquids. And welcome indeed back to part two. Of this week's show uh, and as I said pre-show um, and a little bit earlier on Kizzy in chat asked this question last week can you do me a review of the Aspire Triton sometime please Marco just to, if you think it's as flavorous as I found it to be well Kizzy on that I purchased one um, and I got this one from Isig Wizard there you go uh, and it cost me uh, 44.99 yes um, because I got the RTA kit with it as well um, and I've done some VT for you 
uh, which is coming up now and then we'll talk a little bit more when I come back because um, on this picture here the blue ring um, atomizer is a 1.8 and the black ring is a 0.4 uh, and I was using the black one and I've now changed it to the blue ringed one um, and I'll tell you a little bit more after you've seen the VT. I hope you enjoy. Now then, last week during the show, in chat, Kizzy said, could I have a look at the Aspire Triton tank? Um, because she had some taste issues and she wanted me to have a look. So Kizzy, this is for you. I have purchased one from eSig Wizard with my own hard earned cash, I have to say. Um, and it came on Friday. I've also purchased the RTA system for it uh, and we'll have a look at that a little bit later. Um, but first things first, let's have a little look at the Aspire Triton tank. Yes, we'll just take it out of the box. Uh, and you don't get a right lot in the box. You get um, a little warning thing at the bottom. You do get this. Now, you might miss it because it's actually wedged in there. Um, so if you take it out, you think, oh, well, I haven't got anything in the box. Well, you have. You've got actually a spare atomizer head. Um, so if you pull that little section out here from the box and uh, push it through with your finger, you've got a spare atomizer head. Now, this one has got the light blue rings on it. Uh, and it says, and you won't be able to see this, but it says uh, 1.3 ohms, 10 to 13 watts. You can see just how much that is jam-packed full of wicking material. And it's a chunky thing, let me tell you. It is very chunky. Um, so that's the 1.3 ohm that you get spare. And we'll just put that back in this little plastic thing. So let's look at the tank itself. And we're in nice close up here. Um, it is stainless steel and Pyrex. It's quite chunky, quite heavy. It's got a 510 drip tip on the top, but also it's got this little thing here, which is a two a two pronged affair really. Firstly it's a heat sink. So that takes the heat away from your drip tip. Yeah. Secondly, it covers the top filling system, which you can't see at the moment. And if you've never seen one of these tanks before, um, I'll tell you why you can't see it. On the top of the device, you will see uh, what looks like a face with some lips uh, and what looks like a cigarette. <laughs> well, I think it's supposed to be an easy. You'll see one of those. And then when you move it round, you'll see a little droplet. You move it round again and you see the little face. And you move it round again and you see a little droplet. What you do, and then up on the top, you'll see there's an arrow. And what you do is you turn the entire top section thus to where the arrow points at the little droplet. And then you'll see inside two holes appear. So if I do that in view so you can see it you can see them closing off that's gone into vaping mode and that has then gone round again into fill mode and there's two holes for a reason it doesn't matter which hole you put your e-liquid in the other hole allows the air to come out so you'd be putting your juice in one and the air comes out the other now this goes back to what I was saying last week and previously uh, about top filling systems. Uh, the Limo 2, for instance, has got that lovely top filling system, um, which I really, really like. It, it makes it a lot easier than having to take a device off your uh, battery device in order to fill it. Um, so this makes sense to me. And then your top just fits back on. Now, the third thing that this top section does is it's got a variable airflow. And you can see there, as I turn it round, that slot becomes covered and uncovered. So you've got a variable airflow on your mouthpiece. 
And then at the bottom, you've also got a variable airflow there as well. So you can have serious amounts of air coming all the way through. Um, and I'm assuming the top section airflow will really cool your vapour, whereas the bottom section will allow more air through the atomizer uh, to help with the production of the vapour. Um, but we'll see those in practice. Anyway, taking it apart, easy peasy, it just screws out. Um, it doesn't appear that the Pyrex tank is changeable um, because the top section just spins around and allows you to change the, uh, the filling mode. And before I go on to the atomizer, we'll just look at the bottom section as I turn the top section through the various modes. Now currently, that is closed off, if you see. If I move it round to the vaping position, that then opens up, which is going to allow the juice to flow into the atomizer head. Yeah. So closed and open. So because of that mechanism, there's no real way of uh, changing the uh, the tank. Now I do notice at the bottom there are a couple of slots in the bottom. If I tilt it and spin it round, you'll see just here. Look, a little a little groove. Now I wonder whether or not something slim and wide enough will be able to then open that up um, in order to swap out a glass tank if you break it. That I don't know. But I'm assuming that could possibly happen. Anyway, let's put that down for the second and we'll look at the bottom section. As I've already said, there is a uh, airflow ring selector on the bottom. And then you have your atomizer itself, which, like all of these these days, just screws right into the bottom deck. And there you go. It's quite deep. You can see how deep that is, because it's got to accommodate this whole area here, um, which is rather big, I have to say. It is a very chunky device. Huge amount of air coming in through here. Um, so as you change your airflow at the bottom, those holes are going to allow that air to be sucked up through the atomizer head. And this is exactly the same as the other one, in so much as it's big. But if you look at the centre of it, it's a little bit different. Let me just pull the other one back out and I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison. So here are the two atomizers side-by-side. -side. This is the one that was in the unit. This is 0.4 of an ohm uh, and 25 to 30 watts. And this one is um, 1 1.8 ohms and rated 10 to 13 watts. I might have said this was 1.3 earlier. I'll have to go back and check. But it's actually a 1 1.8 ohm atomizer. I really do wish that they would put the writing in black so you can see it. Because it's very difficult to read um, in the, the kind of pale colour that it is. Um, I guess that's why they've used the different coloured O-rings. So the light blue is a 1.8 ohm atomizer and the black is a 0.4 atomizer. The other difference is that on the lower res atomizer, you'll see there's less wadding than in the 1.8 ohm. This is jam-packed full of filling material. Uh, and then on the top, there's a little circle of uh, mesh to avoid spit back. You do have the same on this one, but obviously there's not as much filling material there. Yeah, so I wonder what the difference is going to be between the two. Uh, we'll start off using this one. I'll fill up the tank very shortly, uh, and then um, I'll use this one for a few days and see how I get on. Uh, and then um, we'll go on to using this one. But they both fit in exactly the same way. It just screws into the bottom of the unit. Yeah. So there we go. We'll put that one back for the minute. Um, and I'm just going to use this one. Now, let's fill it up. And what I thought I'd do is use a juice that I like. Um, and that would make it much easier to compare the taste. And what I'm going to use is some of this, which is Wolf Astaire. And I got this from Herman Vape Guys um, at uh, Vapor Expo. 
and I really like this use. This is one of the favourite ones that I've picked up um, from all the exhibitions. Um, it's really nice. So we're going to use some of this. And what I'm going to do first of all is prime the coil. Just before I actually assemble it, I'm going to prime the coil up. Just a little drop on all the little wick holes. And that will help it on its way. And I'm just going to put some along the top edge inside. Okay, now then, screw back together, and there we go. Now to fill, close the airflow on the bottom. Close the airflow on the top. Move your dial from the vaping position to the filling position, and then pull out your top section. And you'll see there, there we have our top section filled. Um, top section exposed and what I've done just for ease is I've put some of the um, Wolfer Stair juice into a, just a two and a half mil syringe and I'm just going to fill thus squeezy squeezy and we're almost full Almost full there, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the bottle for the rest. And that is probably about as full as I really need it. And then all you need to do is to move your dial again. We're now in the closed position. I've got a little bit of juice in the top there, which I'll just wipe off. And there you go, I've just got rid of that bit of juice that I'd. Uh, left in the top there and now we can put our top section back on and we're almost ready to vape i do recommend you leave this standing for a good few minutes before you start vaping um, which is understandable because you want it all to be soaked in so uh, you'll see now that those holes are exposed and if i close it off again you'll see that they are closed off so the arrow needs to be on the little face uh, and then that will feed down into the atomizer. Now, I would have thought that the juice holes would be in line with those holes, but they're not for some reason. Um, but there you go. Right. We'll leave this a little bit longer and then um, we'll have a little vape on it. But you can see already that the amount of juice has gone down and that's probably because it's soaking into the wick now right i've got this on the uh, vapor shark dna 40 it's telling me it's 0.44 ohms and it's set at 500 degrees fahrenheit and 20 watts so let's uh, give it a blast first i'm going to do is open up the airflow and i've opened that full and i'll leave the top one as is at the moment Now I've just primed the coil a bit more there by giving it some uh, some big pulls um, and um, I'm going to knock it up to 25 watts now that that has been pulled through. So at 25 watts, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, certainly produces the vapour. It's very airy, so I'm going to knock that down to half airflow and see where we go from there. And it's certainly a producer absolutely produces vape um, let me just 
change this uh, top section and try the airflow on there. So I'm going to try it first of all at half. So we've got half on the bottom, half on the top. And it really whistles. <laughs> so I'm going to make it almost closed on the bottom and half on the top. Yeah, I don't think the top does anything for me at all, to be fair. So I'm going to close that back up uh, and open this up to half again. And already it is very warm. I have to say. Let's have another go. And it certainly produces. Um, what I'm going to say now, straight away, is I agree with Kizzy on the taste. Because this juice, this Wolf Astaire, does not taste the same as it does on one of my sub tanks coiled up at 0.16, uh, 0.17 or even 0.26. Now this isn't Wolf Astaire in here, this is something else. Um, but the flavor difference between the sub tank and this Triton tank is definitely there. It's definitely measurable. Um, interesting, yeah, interesting. I'm gonna keep using this for a couple of days. Um, and um, I've got a few days till Tuesday. So I'll let you know on Tuesday what I think. I'm going to vape all this juice. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to coil up another sub tank. I've got another sub tank here, which is cleaned. Um, I'll coil this one up. Um, and I will tell you what I think. But for me, the initial vaping experience, this Triton tank. Um, doesn't give as much flavour as the sub tank. Um, now, bear in mind that a sub tank is about between 22 and 28 quid. Uh, and this, with the addition of the RTA, is £45. And I bought these from eSig Wizard. Um, and there was a code floating around, so I used the code. So I spent £38 basically on that. But you get all of that and a spare tank with the sub tank plus. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll keep using it. We'll look at this maybe later today or or on next week's show. We'll I'll I'll, I'll see how we go. Um, but for now, it's back to the studio. Yeah. So there you go. That was the uh, the Triton tank. Uh, we're going to go to the ads and I'll tell you more when we come back from that. So uh, I'll see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade. UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids. Vapors, Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavours you like and we'll send you 70ml of juice and at least 5 flavours. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. 
and that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And we are indeed back in the room, Hillier. Um, yes, so before the break, you saw the little bit of VT that I recorded at the weekend about the, uh, the Triton. Um, and I used the Wolfer Stage yeast, which I like. So I know how it tastes. And the initial kind of experience, the first half an hour, um, wasn't cracking. It wasn't giving me what I know that juice can. So I persevered. And I even filled the tank again, so I used the rest of the bottle in the in the tank with the black, the bottom one, the black atomizer, the 0.4 ohm. Um, and I finished off the bottle of juice. Um, and I still I still stand by what I said there. It it's not the same flavour as using a sub tank um, coiled up at 0.26 with Japanese cotton. Now using NI, not, not uh, stainless steel or um, or canthal, that's using NI. Maybe that's a difference, I don't know. Um, but I thought what I'd do is I'd change it to the other coil. So at the moment, I've got the top coil, which is the blue one, the 1 1.8. Um, and I know you can see it, it's just really small and really light, and I find it really difficult to see. Maybe I need to get some new glasses, I don't know. Um, but so I've got that in there at the moment, uh, and I've had that in since yesterday. Uh, and using that particular coil, the 1.8 one, you do benefit by changing the airflow on the top a little bit. It's a bit tight otherwise, I feel, even with the airflow full. Um, but I don't like it. And there's not many things that I don't like, and I don't like it. I've got to say, <laughs> it's just not giving me what I think it should. Now, I've got the RTA there. And I haven't actually coiled it up successfully yet. I've coiled it five times. And each time um, it wouldn't fire up. So I'm going to record the next time I do it using the coil that you get with it. Because you do get inside, you get some cotton and some O-rings and stuff. And a little tool. But you also get a pre-made coil, which is difficult to get out when you're live. Um, but it's in there. There it is. You do get a coil which is already set up there you go there it is you probably can't see it but it's already set up um so we'll see how that one pans out um but that's an extra 10 quid so you're paying 45 pounds for a triton tank with the rta whereas cheaper you can get other devices so yeah interesting is is what i will say to that um and kizzy says thanks marco i thought my taste buds were up the creek well it is very subjective, Kizzy, and that's what I have to say as well, is that each person's perception of the juice that they are vaping on is subjective, but also it's subjective on what they're vaping it on. Um, whether that be a sub-tank, whether that be a, an NI coiled tank, whether that be a, a, an iClear 30S, which I still use. Um, but for me, the, the, the better of the two atomizers is the 0.4 ohm one. Um, whacked up to 30 watts, very it's it's okay. There's a different flavour uh, profile on the juice than I would get normally using my sub tanks. Um, so once I've got to grips with actually calling this RTA unit up, um, because like I said, five NI coils and each one just wouldn't fire. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there, but I shall find out. And I shall bring you a bit of VT maybe next week, but. Next week is going to be probably heavily biased towards Vape Fest, which is a whole weekend. And I'm there Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, so it's not going to leave me a lot of time to get things um, set up. 
Um, what I do have for you is a shortened version of last year's Vapefest video. So you can see what it was like last year if you're going this year. And while you're watching it, type into chat and tell me if you're going or not. Yes. Uh, and uh, if you are going, I've got loads of these. I've got a huge box of pens, um, which I will be taking with me. So if you if you are going to Vapefest, stop me and get a pen. And if you're, uh, if you're called Bernice, you've already got two pens. But I'll let you have another one. Anyway. This is my little take on what happened last year in preparation for this year. Yeah, enjoy. Good afternoon, good afternoon. How are we all? It is the 1st of August 2014. Yes, and um, what does that make tomorrow? Well, that makes tomorrow the 2nd of August 2014, and that means it is Vapefest. Yay! It is Vapefest 2014, um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. in Shrewsbury. So I'm setting off today, uh, and uh, I'm going to wing my way down to the showground, get some footage of the uh, stuff beforehand, and then tomorrow, although the weather is not looking too cracking, unfortunately, um, we'll be, um, we'll be vape festing. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm gonna set off, so, um, I'll see you soon. Bye. Well, um, as you can see, <laughs> I'm, uh, 45 minutes away from the showground, uh, and, uh, had a little sat down malfunction, if you like. So I just sat on a toll road, even though I didn't want to go on the toll road. So I just shelled out £5.50 on the M6 toll. Uh, and now it is absolutely bucketing down, as I'm sure you can hear um, above my voice. Yes, so um, I'm hoping this is the only bit of rain that we're going to get. Uh, and uh, the rest of the weekend stays fine. More soon.
I think maybe we'll keep our the offer play with the one and two. Everything. He's good at his job, but we leave it at that. Right? So, he's going to put a bit of VG and PG to get oh, the VG set. So, we've got to pour it like, quite slowly. That's a good tip for it for everyone. absolutely tipping it down, uh, which uh, may have put a few people off, um, but uh, hopefully it didn't. There's been many thousands of people here today with uh, so many vendors and lots of juice and decadent vapours, as you've seen, has uh, done a roaring trade uh, and has been putting on some uh, little demonstrations which people have really enjoyed. And Nigel from Tea Juice has been giving away as he normally does uh, and uh, had a lovely big tent, a lovely big marquee. So there's been uh, so much more space this year and uh, it's been really good fun. It's been interesting. It's been emotional. It's been, uh, it's been, you know, <laughs> it's been windy. It's and been, I was just in the tent. Yeah, that's in, that's in the tent. <laughs> but, uh, yes, good. It's good. We're going to have a little later as well. So. Yeah. Damn good. Damn good. Damn good. Damn good. <laughs>
Good morning, good morning. It is uh, Sunday the 3rd of August, the day after Vapefest 2014, uh, and I'm sat in the car in Shrewsbury Town Centre, just before I set off back home to South Yorkshire, uh, having been back to the showground to pick up my beer cooler, uh, which I had plugged in to the mains on uh, Friday and Saturday, <laughs> with uh, various beers and ciders and soft drinks to uh, keep us all sustained during the day. Um, so I've just picked that back up and uh, everything is now coming down, the marquees are coming down. So big thanks to the committee for doing a great job again this year. Um, this was a fantastic venue, there's room to grow. I was talking to the guys this morning and we're estimating somewhere between five and seven thousand people turned up. Uh, and the weather today is so good, it's such a difference to yesterday. It's such a shame that we had the rain yesterday. Uh, it might have put a few people off, but uh, all in all, once the rain had gone, uh, it was a, a fantastic vape fest. Everyone seemed to have a great time. The vendors had lots of space um, for their customers to, to buy stuff. Uh, and I think a good time was had by all, and I enjoyed myself immensely. So uh, here's looking forward to next year. And now I'm going home. Tati bye. So there you go. Yes, that was my little take on uh, Vapefest last year. And Mr. Ridian Man, the full video is a full 10 minutes longer. <laughs> that was the abridged version. Uh, I had to keep in the uh, the decadent vapors bit with Luke and Archie making that juice because uh, it was right funny. Uh, it's even funnier when you're watching it live, I have to say. Um, so yes, looking forward to the weekend immensely. Um, it, if things go the way they've gone this year for the shows, um, I think it's going to be exceptionally busy. Um, and with the, the sound stage as well, um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a very different vape fest, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens. Yes, and uh, meeting all you lovely people who watch the shows, who come to the shows as well. Um, a lot of which you know we've met already at the various shows this year. So if you haven't been to the other ones and you're going to vape fest, come and say hello. Uh, we'll give you a pen. Um, Dave will have some. Chief will have some. I'll have some. Um, come and say hello. You might get a camera or a microphone pointed in your general direction, um, but it's all good. Um, so that's it from me this week. Um, tomorrow night it is the cave. Now Matt, he, although he's in chat at the minute, um, he has got a bit of a poorly sore throat. Um, so not much of a voice. So it may not be Matt actually presenting. It might be somebody else. We'll need to see what happens. Keep an eye on our social media feeds for that. But I am assured that the cave will be on regardless. Uh, and then of course Thursday the guys, um, Bob and Chief, are going to come on for the old gits. Um, and then I'll be back next Tuesday um, with uh, hopefully some exciting footage from the weekend. Yes. So uh, if I see you at the weekend, marvellous. If I don't see you at the weekend, I'll see you next week. Or you will see me next week. Thanks for watching. Tati bye. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids.